On average, five parents are killed by their biological children in the United States every week. Every week. If you're a fan of shocking true crime stories, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Crime Board. James Colley Jr., age 25, of Moorhead, was taken into custody in Wapiton. Police named the victim in this. It was his mother pending autopsy confirmation. Rosia Coley was born on October 5, 1966, in Liberia. After graduating high school in 1989, fled the country during the Liberian Civil War. Rosia eventually relocated to the United States with her family. At the age of 54, after years of hardships, setbacks, and hard work, she achieved her lifelong goal of becoming a registered nurse. She enjoyed helping others and was excited about her new career. On December 1st, 2022, Rosia was supposed to meet up with her daughter earlier in the day, but she didn't show up. She was quite close to her daughter, so missing their appointment was extremely unusual. It was getting late and no one had really heard from Rosia. So her son-in-law decided to go to the house to see how she was doing and make sure she was okay. But when he got there, he made the horrifying discovery. Rosia's bloody body was on the four-year floor of her home. Police officials were immediately called to the scene and around 11 p.m. they pronounced Rosia dead. She was stabbed to death and based on the state of her body, it seemed as though she had been murdered earlier in the day. There were defensive wounds to her hand and blood near the foyer where her body was found and another area near her son's bedroom door. They learned that Rosia's 2016 Honda Pilot was missing from the house. There was no signs of a break-in and other than the car, nothing else was taken from the home. After speaking with family members at the scene, police learned that Rosia was having problems with her 25-year-old son, James Jr. Just four days before his mother's death, James was heard in an audio recording telling his mom he was ready to take her life. He became the police number one suspect and they sought to speak with him. However, James was nowhere to be found. A few days before Rosia's death, police responded to the family's home for a domestic disturbance. Rosia's daughter, who was home at the time, called the police because James was threatening to kill their mother. And while he did not physically assault her, she was afraid that he would kill her. When police arrive, Rosia again suggests that her son go to the hospital to seek mental health treatment. Again, he refuses. There may be uh, different motivation, although if it's due to mental health or substance use, it doesn't really matter. Police arrest James, charge him with a misdemeanor count of domestic assault, and take him to jail. Unfortunately, he does not stay in jail. According to court documents, Rosia was afraid that he might harm her when his emotions became volatile. She told police her son had a history of mental illness and believed he could kill someone if he wanted. He was a dangerous person when triggered. She was so terrified of her son that she even requested a shift change at work. She typically worked a 3 to 11 p.m. shift, but recently asked to be moved to a daytime shift due to concern about going home at night. She did not want to be alone with him. After James was released from jail, he immediately violates the judge's order. He began to contact his mother, even attempting to call her from a blocked number. He was angry and wanted revenge. On a day of the murder, James showed up at the house and confronted his mom about his arrest. He then proceeded to stab her to death. And after brutally murdering his own mother, he took her car and fled the scene. Court documents show that James placed a phone call to his mother around 4 p.m. that day, and his phone was in close proximity of the home for about nine minutes before moving out of the area, which meant James confronted and killed his mother in less than 10 minutes. It's really, really shocking because I never, I would never ever thought that he would do something like that. You know, people just like yelling and shouting, and then, you know, the cops were talking to them, and I'm like, that's when they started putting up the crime scene tape, and I'm like, okay, something happened, like, something serious. Family says James was unstable and has a history of being violent. Back in 2020, police was called to their home for a domestic disturbance. His sister was in the bathroom at the time. He grabbed her by the throat while still wielding the knife in his other hand, 
threatening to kill her. He was arrested and charged with a misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct when he pleaded guilty in the case, and the aggravated assault charge was dismissed. He was sentenced to only two days in jail, which he already served while he was awaiting trial. Once again, the courts failed both James and the family. As a psychiatric nurse, Reseda provided the kind of help to patients that her son could have likely have benefited from had she been able to convince him to accept it. She knew he was deeply troubled and her never-ending efforts to encourage him to turn his life around and seek help unfortunately resulted in her death. Rosia's family remembers her as a devoted wife, loving mother, and caring aunt. She was a warm-hearted, compassionate, and well-respected person. She cherished both God and people, and she was willing to do anything for those she cared about, especially her children.